Hi friend, David here from Learn Stage Lighting and in today's video I want to take a look at these Netron DMX nodes from Obsidian Control Systems. So we've been uh, aware of these nodes for a while now. Um, they finally stabilized in terms of stock, you know, they're, they're in stock a lot now. Um, and we really like these nodes for outputting DMX from consoles for a few reasons, okay? So when the Obsidian Control Systems lines, a line of nodes first came out, there were a couple of things we noticed about. Uh, some of the first models they had were the uh, EN4, which we've got here, the EP4, uh, which is basically the same thing but without the screen and dial, and the uh, EN12, okay, which is a full rack space, 12 ports across it, not this one. Since then, they've had a variety of different nodes available, and they, there's a few things we really like about them that I want to walk through in this video. If you're going and you're putting in a DMX node, you're sending ArtNet or SACN data from a computer program or a lighting console, and you need more outputs, then you know, sometimes you go and sure, if it's small, if it's really basic, you just go get a really inexpensive node out there and you're good to go. But when you want to do more than that, if you want to do uh, some more tricky things or more interesting, uh, some different things with your system, then uh, it can be really helpful to have a little more function in there. And uh, surprisingly, these nodes really don't cost more than some of the cheaper modes, but they offer a lot more functionality under the hood and can really do a lot for you, including unlock uh, universes in Onyx. So here today, I have three models that really, I think, uh, show all of the function of Netron, um, because basically we've got the E uh, P2 here. Uh, I always forget which ones are P's and N's, which is a little two unit guy. You can mount it to the wall, you can mount it to an electrical box, um, it can get its power from PoE, you can get it from USB, it can be mounted to a truss, a lot of different options per mounting. Um, so EP2, two universes right there, screen and dial, super nice. Then we've got the EN4, okay? Now the EN4, EP4, and EN12 models all basically have the same software built in. There's a lot of functionality built in under the hood uh, with triggering different cues and merging and stuff like that. And, and there's a few more things in, in these than there are in the twos. Okay, so in the fours and the twelves, there's a little more there. And then we have the DMX splitter. This is the RDM10. Now the DMX splitter nodes are really stinking cool because here you've got basically a DMX splitter okay that allows you to assign across all of these 10 ports which ports are universe a which ports are universe e b rather b let me learn my alphabet okay now you might be asking okay um so you've got universe a and b five pin inputs here and then you can assign them in the software here or via a computer uh, to any of these outputs. So it can be half and half or any combination thereof. You can go every other and drive people crazy, um, whatever you want to do. Okay, but there's more. It's on the network. And so it actually doesn't even need input here. It can just take its, its network input from ArtNet or SACN. So it's a two port node, but it's also a splitter built in. And then there's even more, okay? So we've used these in some really cool situations, like we had someone recently using a wall station to send a DMX input into port four, and then that would send DMX to ports one, two, and three. So basically what they were doing is they were using a light key, a Mac software, to run their lights. And then they also had a wall panel that was sending DMX to run scenes when light key wasn't active, okay? You can do that really easily. You can bring it in as an input, uh, broadcast it to merge, and then it can merge uh, as a backup to these other outputs. So when their lighting software is up, the wall switch doesn't activate anything. When their lighting software is turned off, 
then the backup, the incoming DMX, is sent to those three ports, and the wall switch works. Uh, similarly, this splitter, the RDM10, has a lot of similar functionality in there too. On the back, there are green terminal blocks. Okay, we can see them there, those green guys. Those are uh, closed contact switches. Okay, they're contact switches. So what those means is you can hook up any kind of switch to these, just, you know, a switch that connects and disconnects uh, the wire. And these, through low voltage, now can trigger different things inside of this node. You can trigger different configurations. You can trigger cues. So just having a simple switch that is like a lights on switch in a venue uh, can be a really easy way to just literally, without turning on a console, somebody can walk in, lights on, activate a bunch of DMX lights in a queue that you stored into this unit. Okay, uh, what else do we like about? Well, most of these units, uh, the 4s, the RDMs, and the 12s, all have network switches in them. So network in and pass through to the next unit. So you can sit a bunch of these in a rack. You can run network through them on the back piece of cake. Also in terms of networking, there is now the Netron Central Utility, the CLU software. And what we really like about the CLU is no matter what IP addresses you've got these set to, if they're in the range of your network, if they're not, you plug them all in, you run this software, it goes and finds them all. If they're not in the same IP address range, you can actually change it in the software, even though your computer's in a different range, which is like not a typical normal thing you can do. And so you can see all your nodes in there, you can label them, you can set all their settings, all from one PC, you can make them blink so you know which one you're talking to, um, really cool stuff. So at the end of the day, if you're looking for a DMX node, uh, the biggest thing about these Netron units is they don't really cost more than alternatives on the market. In fact, if you're looking at some of the, you know, quote unquote, professional grade nodes, because I, I believe uh, highly in this hardware, um, it's been proven to be professional grade. Um, but if you compare it to a lot of those other nodes that some of them aren't in stock for like a couple years, um, these are like a fraction of the price. If you look at cheaper nodes, these really aren't that much more. But what you get, especially if you're doing different gigs or you have an installation where you want to merge in some universes or have a splitter and a node all in one unit, um, a lot of times these are going to just make more sense financially because of everything they can do under the hood. Um, so if, you know, if this sounds interesting to you, I know we're going to be doing more videos on this. We're going to do some more videos on like configuring these guys, on how to set them up, um, on you know different situations where you might use them. In fact, we'll soon be doing a video about over on the main channel about house light control, uh, just like we had that customer do, so that you can learn how to do it in your situation. So if that sounds good, uh, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe here and. Uh, Check us out over at Learn Stage Lighting Gear. We've got all these nodes available, and we would love to help you find the node that you need. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. See ya.